Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Amber. And this is my next hobby. And uh, we're sitting on our countertop um, because we're going to actually be talking about these cabinets behind us. Or rather, what's inside of them. It's a mess in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have the same problem. You know, you've got that one cabinet that just has a ton of Tupperware and to-go containers that you've yeah. saved and lids and bowls and nothing uh, stacks nicely yeah. Everything ends up everywhere like it's chaos. Yeah every once in a while like one of us will be like I'm gonna clean part of this and it sits there like looking nice for like a day And then the second we have to put more stuff away. It's just like toss it where's ever's room It doesn't matter. Just get it in like so today. We're gonna look at ways we can organize this and um, we're gonna use our 3D printer to help us out with that. We kind of have a rough game plan that we would previously discussed. Basically we want to find a way to kind of collect all the lids together based on the type of lid they are. That way we can kind of have like stacks of bowls and then we'll have like the lids next to them or stored somehow and hopefully it'll keep things from turning into a mess again. And we're gonna also try to utilize some space that is I guess hard to use in a cabinet such as the door. Obviously we have to be careful of the shelves but there's a good couple inches that maybe we could have some lids stored and things like yeah. that. So so I think we're the, our general game plan right now is we're gonna start by going through the cupboard getting measurements on the cupboard itself plus a bunch of our like containers and things. Then we'll hop onto the computer, design the actual storage containers, and then we'll come back and actually organize this mess. Let's, let's get to it. Let's start by showing you all of our cupboard shame. Here's our mess. This maybe looks slightly better than normal just because yeah. like uh, a bunch of stuff is dirty or in the fridge right now. So there's like more empty space. Usually it's more like chock full up in here. But as you can see, we've got these artfully arranged piles of Tupperware, takeout containers, all kinds of storage. I've got all these silicone like storage lids for Christmas that are just in a pile here. Yeah, it's, you know, it could be worse, but it could also be much better. <laughs> yeah. It's just like after we, after the dishes are done and we go to put them away, it's not like this goes here. It's just like, Toss, toss it in, yeah, find room for it. I think if we like give everything like a good place and especially yeah. the lids, the lids is the, are the hardest. I think another thing we need to do is like some of the Tupperware containers, like we need to figure out what matches with what and what we can either like throw out or maybe like repurpose like some of the Tupperware container takeout containers we can use for like projects and painting and stuff because we don't have stuff that matches it in here to actually use it for food anymore. So, yeah. but so yeah, now measure time. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming these will all be pretty similar, but we should maybe check them all anyway. Yeah, especially um, since they are, like we can change, well we can change the height of these if we wanted to. Oh, that's true, that's true. So we do have that option. Yeah. We'll have to think about that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like, we'll say nine and three quarters inches. Okay. I would underestimate That's two. what, yeah. Like we almost could say nine and a half, really. Let's just say the bottom two are nine and a half. Okay. And then this top one, uh, this top one's like eight inches, slightly over, but I figure we want to undershoot it. Okay, this is just under 21 inches. Yeah, just under 21 inches for each side. So I would say maybe shoot for like 20 inches that we have in terms of available space. We should measure like the depth. The depth, like two, like from the door mm, to the mm -hmm. shelf. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of it, just under three quarters of an okay. inch. I would say most of the stuff we're gonna have some wiggle room where we can go a little bit deeper. We talked about wanting to do some stuff on the doors. Yeah. For like some lids and things. What else would be like useful for us to have? Like, should we have some kind of like separators for things <sighs> or? I think we could design a couple different things while, yeah. we're, while we're in here, so. Do we want to just pull all of the lids um, so we only have the Tupperware in there? That way we can kind of pre-plan and see. That way we know what kind of can, like kind of storage we need for each. Yeah. I know we kind of talked about waiting to pull everything out, but I think if we're going to have to measure the lids anyway, it might make sense to just pull them all out now. Yeah, we could do that.
We don't really use these round containers much. I feel like I end up usually grabbing the square ones. Yeah. Do we just want to move that to the project pile? Yeah, I think we should, yeah, move that. Yeah. I just like, I hate getting rid of stuff like this because like, single use plastic isn't good. So, which is why we wind up with all these accumulated yeah. things. So, like I said, we'll kind of be sticking these in our like, assortment of project materials. That way we'll have it for the next time we've got, like I said, like paint, glue, something that needs to be in something and we we'll yeah. a place to put it. We've got a lot more room now. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more room now. There's a, there's a few um, like bowls and things that are definitely gonna go here. Yeah, and that'll kind of fill up that mm -hmm. space, but I feel like this whole up part is kind of like, we've got all this room to work with now, which is nice. I mean, again, we could just take all these and stack them in here, but I don't think that's gonna really fix our problem. No, because if is, we have to stack them up neatly, it's not going to mm, happen. I think it'll be good to keep these as sparse as possible. So, you know, with like the, the, the door, the door uh, shelves or just some vertical storage. Um, storage. Like cubbies almost. Yeah, uh, that'll help keep it sparse so that it isn't just all piled on top of each other. Yeah. Okay, so we're thinking these ones for like the doors, just because there's like so many of them, it seems to make the most sense that like, let's get these out of the way and leave that space open on the cupboard. I think with these two, because they're round, we can't like store them on their side because we'll risk them rolling out of the cupboard. So it makes sense to give them something that they're contained within. Yeah. Or like these ones, so like they're nice that they like snapped together, but the problem is like us remembering to snap them back together. So I think we can just store these in like cubbies, but since these won't roll, I'm thinking we can like put them like right up here uh -huh. and basically have like a box on its side, essentially like so like a little cubby type thing yeah. that- Or even know, just like little, like little stands that come up almost like, almost like bookends in a way, you know? So it doesn't have to maybe. be like a self, doesn't have to be a, a whole container, but we could also, if we printed those, almost like bookends where it's got like a flat on the bottom to like kind of keep it stable. Yeah. Then we could get a few of those and like it, it could hold all the different shapes. I like that idea because then it's customizable if we get like new stuff. We right. could just add another like wing of them. I like that idea a lot. Cool. Um, the only thing I think we're gonna have to be careful with is that is make sure it like goes back far enough mm -hmm. and goes like tall enough so we don't have stuff like flopping yeah. over into the wrong section. Like, no, that makes sense. I think sense. it's gonna have to be like heavy duty bookends mm -hmm. essentially. And I'm not too concerned about that. The length is good. We don't want it to go super high either no. since like even with this like like an inch up is gonna hold it yeah and not like not make it flop over well like a ton, you have so. to remember that these aren't gonna be together though oh, so right, they right, will right, right. probably be more flop prone to like flopping around two to two and a half inches or something yeah like maybe that. even three just to play it safe i know that's gonna okay. be more print time and more material but i think i'd rather just like have like something that's gonna be sturdier okay. that we won't have issues. The last one is like these. We have a bunch of these. We got uh, those, and we've got also got like a couple other ones. random little ones. So, so we maybe, do... maybe we just print a couple extra of whatever we make to hold the yeah. stuff, the stuff on the door on this side, mm -hmm. and we just put a couple on this door as well. I like well. that because then we can kind of just like whatever little ones that we don't have a ton of, so they don't need their own dedicated space. I think that would be good. But yeah, we probably. We don't want to like take up a ton of space. No. But um, I don't think we really need to. Like these right. lids aren't that big in terms of like yeah. the width. I think we'll be fine doing a couple inches. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just print, for those we'll print a bunch that are basically maybe as wide as I can print. Yeah. And then um, fairly tall. Mm -hmm. um, we'll print a, a handful of those just to fit the, mm -hmm. the shelves. So now we just need to design something, print it, and then we're good. As long as it works. sex since we started uh, working on this project. Yeah, yeah, it's been a couple weeks. Um, right after we took everything down and kind of figured out what we wanted to do, 
um, I made a really large batch of soup <laughs> and we ended up using a whole bunch of our containers uh, to store it. Um, so we've eaten through a bunch of it. Um, so now we finally have most of our containers back. So. Yeah, we didn't want to shoot when our cupboard was mostly bare anyway, because that's going to be a lot less dramatic before and after in terms yeah. of like organizing our whole cupboards. So here we are pretty quickly designed like the little shelf uh, or the little door uh, shelf thing we were talking about. Yeah, so it's got these little tabs that will mount on the insides of the doors, which we'll do in a second. I also made just these little, they're basically like bookends that we can hopefully be able to stack lids into. So we've got that, plus, you know, a lot of the organization that we did. Designing and printing these went pretty quick. You got them all whipped up real fast. We had a little bit of an issue just because we've had some like ongoing issues with the 3D printer bed, but overall it went really well. We got this stuff printed out. Uh, also, while I was at it and while we were working on stuff in the kitchen, uh, one of the knobs that we had made for our IKEA cabinet uh, broke off, so I spent a little bit of time updating the design on that and printed it out. Of course, while I was sanding it and prepping it, part of the plastic kind of like chipped off in a weird way. So I have it mounted for now. I'll probably end up printing it again, um, but at least we have a working hand. Yeah, and if you haven't yet, definitely go check that out. That was the first video we did on our channel. It's really fun. We designed and printed our own custom cabinet handles, so you can check that out. We're really happy with them still. Like, yeah. they look really cool. This is the first issue we've had with them with the mm -hmm. one breaking, so yeah. they're holding up pretty well so far. Yeah, yeah let's get into... Uh, let's get Turn into... this stuff up? Yeah, getting this finished. All right, so these um, holders that I made, uh, they're going to mount on the insides of the door. I put these little tabs on here that we're going to attach some command hooks to. These are like the command Velcro uh, hooks. I think the ones we're using are rated for up to like 12 pounds or something like that. So we know the lids are gonna come anywhere near that. So we should be good as far as them holding tight. We were thinking of having these in the center, right? Center-ish. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't but need like to be. But like the center section. Yeah. I'm thinking it's a little bit lower. That way we've got enough room for like the lids to go up. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are, that's in there solid. Cool. Oh, good. It does <laughs> close, <laughs> so that's good. Little, was a little nervous that I'd done that wrong. That's like perfect, yeah. We'll do the same thing on this side. going for a hundred percent accuracy as far as centering here. No one's gonna really notice. Yeah, it's, you know, the cupboards are closed 90% yeah. of the time. I would call that level as far as the bubble's concerned. Um, so I know we kind of, this bottom shelf is all spoken for with like our regularly used dishes. Um, I know we talked about kind of doing glass over there and then leaving those lids to like sit at the side and then using mm. one of these guys by it. Okay. Well, see, cause these ones have like the, they're like rubbery. Yeah. So we might not even need it to worry about it with got these it. ones. All right, so we've got these ones, which I know we don't have all of the lids for them. Mm -hmm. Unless, do we want to put those as like just sitting down? Like just in no, the, because those are gonna get oh, chucked right, everywhere. Right, like right. on their side, like we've got oh, here. Oh, got it. Boom. What if? Yeah, wait. What if we put these up here? Would these fit down here? Mm -hmm. We'd have to move these. Yeah. But then we can put the lids for these ones okay. over here. Okay. So really, the only lids we have left are these little baby lids for these little babies and these slightly larger lids with these guys up here, so. Um, I feel like we just need to set up like a separate corral, like we've got going over here, because mm -hmm. we've got 
we've so got, got a bunch three of more these. of these, yeah. so I feel like we can stick some other stuff in. We'll move the little ones down, and then we'll also have more spaces for lids. Alright, we can try that. Let's try that. Because this way, like, you can't lose these mm -hmm. as far back. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, like, this extra room. We can stick another one of these in. Right, and then we can have our little lid corral. Uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I feel like we're gonna end up fiddling with it, like, mm -hmm. beyond this point, but, like, I'm pretty happy with this. I can see all of our Tupperware. Everything has lids, yeah. like, uh, yeah, less likely to place. murder any of us yeah. if we open the door too fast again, yeah. so. I could see a, slim, a, a slight possibility of us making some adjustments, you know, down yeah. the road, but I think we'll, we'll live with this for a little bit and kind of uh, make, make, make some changes if we, if we need to. As you can see behind our heads. <laughs> we, did we did it! I think just a couple of these little changes, uh, 3D printing these holders for the lids and some of the dividers um, and just actually spending the time to reorganize how yeah. it was all laid out. I think it makes a big difference in this cabinet. It reaffirms that like having a 3D printer can be a practical thing. Mm -hmm. Like. You're not just printing out toys and stuff, you're actually, oh, let's make our kitchen a little more functional and usable. And the really nice thing is that we were able to do this as renters and don't have to worry about not getting our security deposit back because of it. You definitely just have to get more creative when you're renting versus yeah. like owning a house. You can do whatever the heck you want, but we've got some, you know, restraints that make things more of a challenge, mm -hmm. but I feel like it makes it a little more fun. But also, you know, if we wanted to switch this up, this isn't screwed into here or yeah. glued into here. We can peel it off and move it somewhere else. So. Uh, even from a practicality standpoint, I guess, you know, it allows us to make adjustments down the road. Well, that's all we've got for this video. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm sure we'll probably have an update to how this is all working in a few weeks, so look forward to that. Probably post something on our social media. Um, you can follow us at my next hobby on Instagram. We've been discussing doing some other, like, kitchen-y, home, mm -hmm. cleanup, organization type stuff using like the 3D printer and eventually the CNC machine once that's finished. So keep an eye out for those as well. We're super excited to kind of find, you know, fun, practical ways to use all these things, even as much as we enjoy, enjoy just doing ridiculous stuff. Make, ways to justify those yeah, ridiculous it, it expenses. Helps to justify <laughs> it. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fun content like this. And yeah, we do all kinds of different fun stuff, so even if this isn't your exact interest, I'm sure we've got something else that might appeal more to you. Yeah, there's something for everyone. <laughs> but that's all we got. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.